Hi guys, Luke here with Motion Page, just here with a quick tutorial on how you can achieve something like this. Just a very simple effect. For this we're using split text and stagger and we're also applying two classes that we can use and target globally. Uh, one class is used to control the letters bouncing up and down and then another class is used just to apply this underline effect. So enough talking and let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm going to be using Oxygen Builder for this. I'm just gonna make a quick page here. I'm gonna give my page a name. Publish and edit with Oxygen. Next, I'm just going to add some elements to the page. We'll start with a section. I'm gonna add a heading. I'm gonna change this to a header two. I'm gonna to center my heading here. And I'm going to add some lorem ipsum text. Okay, next I'm going to make this a span. And next what I want to do is add a class to this that we can use in motion page to target. I'm going to call it MP bounce. I'm going to save this page and see what it looks like in motion page. So for this animation, let's create a new timeline. And I'm gonna call this timeline something like bounce effect. I'm gonna select our page here so we can see what's going on. Okay, so here's the page that we've just created. Another important step here is if we want to reuse this timeline on different pages, which is what we maybe want to do, then we'll need to make sure that this one here is selected. So we'll just make sure that's selected there. Next, we'll select our class, which we just created, which was MP Bounce, and make sure you press Enter here. So if I hover over this class now, you should see this highlight like so. So what we want to do for the bounce, this is just for the characters here. So we'll do split text, characters, and we'll also stagger. And let's do one second. And nothing will happen yet. So what we'll need to do is just apply some effect so we can see what's happening. So now, as you can see, every second, each character goes up, but obviously that's way too long. So what we need to do is just click on each and this will turn to amount. And what that means is from the start to the finish, it'll take one second in total now. Okay, cool. So what we'll need to do back in Oxygen, we'll just need to target the, uh, the parent class here and just make sure that you apply overflow hidden and this will give it kind of a like a mask effect in uh, motion page over here so as you can see now it's coming above this invisible line another thing what i want to do is i want to change the ease to elastic just so it gives it more of a bounce effect like so so next what we want to do is create our line which is going to fade in from left to right so back over in oxygen let's create a new class so we'll create a new class here called MP line and on MP line, I'm just going to add some custom CSS. Okay. So here's the CSS that I've just added. And what this is doing is, as you can see, we have a black line. Now this is using a linear gradient, but also what you cannot see is there's actually another line, which is also black. So I just did two black lines so we can actually see what's going on, but what we'll need to do, as you can see, linear gradient to right black, black. We can change this one to transparent. So now that these are transparent, um, obviously on the front, we don't see a line initially, but we're gonna use motion page to control the position using the property background size. And it's gonna appear that the line's coming in from the left. So let's go back to motion page. So you can only see there's a black line there. I'm not sure why that's happening, but that shouldn't be yeah, so this is the front. This is what the front end looks like. Uh, in any case, let's just continue. So what we need to do for this is we just need to create a new animation node since the timeline is going to be the same. I'm going to put this in line with the bounce and then we're going to target our new class here, MP line. 
So as you can see, that's also highlighting the uh, the text there, which is good. And now all we need to do for MP line is just go to the two and then we'll do a custom property and we'll do background size. And for this, we need to do zero percent. We actually need the percent sign here, otherwise this will not work. Two pixels in height and then we'll do 100%. And once again, uh, two pixels in height. So as you can see, we have the line fading in now, which is perfect. Now, just to make this a little bit more linear, you can see it's a little bit faster than the text. So we'll just make sure that the uh, easing is set to none. So that looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna save timeline here, refresh the front. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna change the color of this text to a, a little bit of a darker color. So it's more in line with the uh, the underline there. So I'm just gonna do that on the bound. Select a darker color. Cool. So if I inspect this, now as you can see, uh, we do have a small issue here. So the line is not actually in line. So we'll just do that real quick on the MP line. I've just realized MP lines on the parent. This needs to be on the span. And then in the custom CSS, we'll just add a display inline. Cool. All right, let's go back to motion page. So as you can see, we have a, a slight issue here, which is the line is kind of, uh, the characters are coming in from just below the line. To fix this, which is quite difficult because the span we created here is displayed in line, which means we will not be able to control the margin top and bottom. So what we can do on the parent is to make a line height, which is matching the, uh, the span. So what I'm gonna do in typography, I'm just gonna give this a line height of around 1.25. The headings become smaller to kind of match the, uh, the span that's inside of it. So back in motion page, so this is already refreshed as you can see, but that line looks much better now. See what that looks like on the front. So that looks good on mobile and then also full width. Perfect. Optional guys, but the reason I used the custom CSS the way I did on the line is if you wanted to change colors, for example, on here. So if you want the, the line to go red and blue, we'll save that, save, refresh. So you can even control the color of the line with a gradient. And then obviously you could do that with the text as well, using WebKit clip text and uh, using transparency with the background. Uh, that's also an option if you wish to do that. But I'm just gonna change this back to uh, black here. But yeah, there you have it guys. Just a very simple tutorial. I hope that's helpful. Please subscribe for more. We will be releasing more videos like this in the near future. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.